Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for tonight's program. I'm Rachel, and I'm with the programming department here at Kenton District Library. Tonight, I'm very excited to be joined by Mike from Home Repair Services. Hey, Mike, are you there? There you are. I'm Hi. here. I'm here. <laughs> thank Thanks you. For us. Thank you very much. Are we in now? Yes, we are All live. Right. All right. Awesome. Awesome. So <laughs> thank you for um, inviting and, and KDL for inviting Home Repair Services to bring a tile workshop to all, all of our viewers this evening. Just uh, so we're going to be, uh, you, you can see behind me here, if you look around, you see there's a lot of different stuff here. It takes, it can, can take a lot of different stuff to do tile, but we want to show you how. And I'm going to show you this. So this is just kind of a, an example of what students do when they take our, our tile class here at Home Repair Services. Just a, a nutshell, if we get going, is Home Repair Services is a nonprofit organization here in Grand Rapids, been around for 42 years. And one of the things we have is a self-help program, and that's to empower folks with knowledge, skill sets, how to do, take care of some of those things at home. And we have workshops here in this room that I'm in. It's called our Fix-It School. Come in our front door. And this little small ranch tile house is built inside of our building. And students come in here every Saturday at 10 o'clock. And it's for free workshops, and we do stuff like this all the time. So we'd love to have you join us, and we'd love to have you continue to watching and supporting uh, KDL's live stream. So what I'm going to do is show you some tools. I'm going to show you some products, some different things to use, um, choices, a few different kinds of tiles, so you can have some ideas. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to we're actually going to I say we. <laughs> what I'm used to doing here. Um, going to actually put some tile on, on a board like this this evening, okay? So with further, without further ado, so some products. So if you're gonna put tile, when you're gonna put tile down, what are you gonna put the tile on? We need to know that. And there are different kinds of hardy boards. So this is a very hardy, rigid board, right? And you can see that there's a grid. If I bring this up close, you can see there's a pattern, right? So it's the lines to be able to follow help you guide along the way then there's also i mean there's a half inch thick cement board you can put down there's this type of stuff it's for walls shower ceilings and floors it's waterproof half inch thick and it is if you look at its edge the edge of it it looks it's a very very dense um, foam product is what i'm going to call it and that i might not have the right terminology for that but it's a half inch thick and you can cut it with just a utility knife by just scoring it just like that. And then you can just snap it off. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping you were able to see that. And so I just scored this and I folded it and snapped it right off. So what, what, what I like about this is that it's very user friendly to be able to to cut and fit to your to your walls if you're doing a tub surround or if you're doing your your floor or whatever this stuff is is user friendly okay you would put you would put some adhesive down and, and stick this into it and then you would fasten this down and then you would have you know this is what you'd be tiling over so a couple of different things there there's a product here that it's another, it's another type of um Another type of, yeah, a little sub surface that you can put down, and it's it's got a fiber on the on the back side, and then it looks like partial honeycomb shape. You'll see that, right? So you would put if this was the floor, you imagine it's okay. You're, let's say I'm gonna use a tub, a shower stall as an example, and you would have this down. You would cover this whole thing with with the proper adhesive, and then you would stick this right in it. So now what you did is you you, you you bonded this to the floor, right? Then you go over it after that dries and you cover this whole thing again, and then you can start putting your all your tiles on this. So it makes a very solid surface. A lot of different things. And, and again, this is a, 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 a what I call friendly user assemble, install friendly kind of products. There are more. We could just talk about products all night, but um, as you notice, I'm kind of talking quick, move through this. 
So there are different kinds of trowels. I'm going to move this sample piece out of the way. Different kinds of trowels. We've all seen these, right? With a big, with the notches. And here's one with a V notch in it. So you can see that. You can see this small one here. It's got a quarter inch by quarter inch notch. This one is a quarter inch by three eighths deep notch. You can see the difference between those two. One is deeper, deeper than the other. And then this one is the half inch by half inch. You can see that quite a, quite, quite a difference. So then there's smaller one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, that smaller one that has the V notches in it. That's what I'm gonna use this evening. There's one that's actually on a, on the end of a putty knife. There are all kinds of them. And here's one Then in our classroom, this is what we, all the students use because then we can have a choice of the different types on this. And it's, it's very, very easy to use. And I'm going to be using this this evening. So when you, when you get tile, one of, one of the things you need to know first is what kind of tile you're going to use. You, so you look at all kinds of stuff online and, you know, look at images and look at magazines and go to stores and get an idea of what you want. Everybody knows what they want. It'll just jump out at you. And that's the one you like. So then what size is it? And then that determines what type of a notch you need for those trowels. And every, every box of tile is going to tell you um, on the back of different, all back of um, adhesives and stuff. It'll actually have, you can see on the back of this tub right here, it'll, it'll tell you that these are, this type of adhesive is different, is good for this size, these sizes. And here are a couple different types of uh, trowels to be able to use. So I really feel that information, there's a lot of information out there and it's very friendly to be able to know that, okay, yes, I made my choice on my tile. Then this is the type of, of, of trowel I need for it. And this is a type of grout or adhesive and this is the type of grout I need for it. Um, when that, when that, all the tiles are, are stuck down and then you have to go over it and fill in all those little cracks right there. It's cracks, they're not cracks, they're, <laughs> they're grout lines, all those spaces. So now you, this would be the next day, you would actually put some, some grout on here and use this type of trowel. It's, it's kind of a very dense foam and it's pliable, right? It has a, just a little give to it. So you would you would you would get the, take this the grout and fill in all those gaps going both ways, both directional and across on this one. The idea is to go across, but since these two are like the diamond shaped vertical or up and down like this, well then in all reality this these would be best to be filled going this way. If they were straight up and down like these up here, then you'd want to be going on an angle because that the this thing when it what it's doing is it's pushing the grout into that space and when it does you go this way and you push it against that side of it, the gap and when you come back now you push some against that side of the grab gap and it fills that void so much better set that out of the way <clears throat> um there are different kinds of files there are different kinds of nippers so here's a here's a file right here this actually has some this this carbide on this edge right here it's like this is something you would use like oh maybe you wanted to remove a tile here's an, another board uh, maybe you wanted to remove a tile well you can actually get one of these it, and yes it takes a little bit of work the machines are better, but this is something that you can pick up for, you know, seven, eight dollars, something like that. And then you would just go right in that grout line and go back and forth. And you can basically, you can grind that, you can grind that grout all out of there and then just break up. The probably the reasons why, the reason why you're changing the tiles because it's broke. So it doesn't matter if you break it some more after the fact, but go all the way around it. Go all the way, all the way through the, all the grout, all the way around it before you take it out. Otherwise, you're just probably going to break the one that next to it and then just put in a new tile. So these types of things are nice. And then there's there's these nippers right here. 
and I'm going to show you those if you wanted to break off just a little piece of tile right here. So, so I'm going to come to this other corner and these little nippers will actually just take off just a little bit. Just like that. So, all right. So maybe you had to just go around something. Maybe you had to just take off the corner so it would fit around something. That's how you could do that. Uh, and then there's this, this type of little file or saw. It's, my, it's a coping saw, but it's actually got this carbide on here that can do the same thing. You can... You can see that I've sunk that in there that far right there already. So you could remove some with this. So you can see I cut that in there. This will cut through it. All right. Um, the other thing is now this one is as a, a, a regular file, right? And it's got carbide and diamond, diamond powder. <laughs> they, but they are affordable. <laughs> so this is another thing. Let's just say I made that little notch right there but I wish it was bigger so I could take this file and just go because I want that to be a V. Right, I made it a little bit bigger. I made it rounded off or maybe I want to do, I don't want that sharp edge right there. So then I would just go across that, so. I hope you're seeing that and I apologize if that sounds are going back and forth too loud for you, but I wanted you to be able to, it's good to see stuff and, and, and how it actually happens. There are also little bits um, similar to what these are. These are called rotary files. Okay. These are, these two right here are made for wood and steel. All right. But they make these that are also carbide and you can use them on tile. This is one that I had used, so it's got all that same kind of powder stuff around here, or, 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 or carbide around here. You put this in a drill, and then I could also just go over this with a drill and dress it up just a little bit if needed. Little things, it's the little things, right? And in all reality, these are not, you know, like, this is not very real expensive stuff. Another thing that I have in my arsenal of, of tools is this little cement um, stone. This one is actually made for, for if you had to grind some concrete. Um, and But what really what they work good for also is if I cut a tile and then I wanted to use this stone on it, you can see it's been rubbed there a lot. But you could take a brick, a piece of brick, and you see what I'm doing? All I'm doing, I'm, I'm straightening that up, making it a nice smooth edge. There, that's that's so much better. It's not as jagged now. All right. So just some different things. This is a for cutting tile. You got to cut some tile. So this is a tile cutter, and probably everyone has seen one of these things. They're, they they look. Mean, they look meaner than the bite, <laughs> so they are quite user friendly to use. This part just slides back and forth, and I'm going to bring this up close. And if you look underneath of it, I'm hoping I'm holding this right. Right here, this little wheel is a cutting wheel, almost like a glass cutter. Actually, it's you lay the tile in here, and then when this comes down, it drags across the tile and scores it, scratches a line in the surface of it. And then this part right here that's hanging down below, it's actually beveled slightly. I think you can see the bevel right there. You can see how it's beveled both directions. And then imagine a tile's underneath of it. Right down the center of it is the metal rib. I'll get that back in place. That metal rib right there. And then you just push down on that and it comes down and pushes on both outer sides and it'll pop that, break that tile. I'm going to set this here, and I'm going to set a piece of tile up here, it's just the same tile I had before. And if you wanted to mark the tile, you could get one of these. Let's say you needed a piece um, this wide, okay? <laughs> so these, these, this is called a china marker, 
All right, you can buy these in black and red and they work really good because you know they don't come off. You had to you rub them to get them off. If you use a crayon or use a pencil, um, these are just more obviously more visible. So I'm gonna lay this tile right here. I'm gonna lay that tile right on that line. You can see that rib right down the center of that of, of right here where my thumb is. You can see that rib right there, that steel rib. The rest of this is foam on the side. So I put that right on there. That's right where that wheel's gonna be. Okay. I'm gonna just put the wheel on there, on that line, hold this down, and you hear a cracking sound. Or should I say, not cracking, a scoring, scratching sound. And all I did is scr that sc scratch the surface, and then I just bring this up here and push down. Just a little pressure down. And it just split that right on that line. So you could do this, you could do this over and over. And just so you can make the pieces whatever however wide you want. I'm doing this quick and I'm doing this up, you know, at chest level instead of down here on the table or on the floor, but. They, they break quite easily and then you can again if, if they're an edge you can just clean them up for that file so again in in our workshops here and <laughs> to let you know also this is going to be the this is like a teaser to our workshops here but then also at kdl we're going to be having a couple of workshops at the library we're going to start doing some in-person workshops and we're going to have one <laughs> Uh, Wednesday, January 26th at 6 o'clock at Plainfield, and another one on Monday, February 7th at Alpine at 6.30. So look for those on KDL's website, and uh, we'd love to see you there, as well as here. <laughs> another type of saw for, for cutting is one of these. This is, these are, are I see, I probably had this one for 20 plus 20 years and maybe paid $50 for it. But this is a tile saw, right? It's got a hopper in the side of it right here where you, you dump a little bit of water in there. You can see the blade right there. And all that blade has to do is touch that water. So, and then it keeps that blade damp while you're cutting. And they, I mean, they make really nice cuts. It doesn't have to be fancy and expensive. And then you, so that's this blade, this thing comes up and down, get it out of the way. And that blade right there is, it's a, got look like a diamond and carbide dust on it. So when it spins, it's wet and it just cuts that tile. And that's where the, another place where those, um, those China crayon markers are, are good because a crayon, a uh, felt marker, uh, a lot of tiles are so smooth on the surface that, that when that stuff, when that blade is spinning and throwing that water at it, it just throws it right off. Where that china marker, it's more waxy and sticks to the surface and works really good. So uh, that's what I like. And then, so you would just put the a piece of tile here. I'm not going, I would really like to show this, but I know it would make a lot of noise and that probably would not look sound good on your end. And so then it, it, it just slides across and run it through that blade and you cut the piece. So just another thing to, that you can use. I mean, they make these in different, different, um, I'm going to call it categories. That's what my word I'm thinking. But I always say, don't ever buy the cheapest thing and don't buy the most expensive. There's no reason for either one of them, right? So this one, like I said, but it was 20 years ago and it was $50, but you can tell that it's not high end. It's, you know, it's got a plastic grid and different uh, tray and everything, but it, I'd still use it. So. And on the size of the project you're doing, you know, maybe you want to just say, you know what, I, I want to get one of those and simplify everything. So, all right. So then those are some of the tools you got, that you would use. We, we did the subsurface and then the tools that you would use. We talked a little bit about tile, but I want to talk a little bit about some adhesive stuff. And there's, you know, there's, there's powder form adhesive. When you, you just go to, go to a tile shop. Right. Um, go to if you go to a big box store, just tell them, tell them, tell them what 
it is that you're going to be tiling. Maybe that's where you get your tile. And then also have them show you. This is what I said. Have them show you on the bag or on the container how it matches up with the tile that you chose. Okay. I'm not discrediting their knowledge or their information. I'm just saying let's all be on the same page and have an understanding of what it is. If you was to ask me, that's exactly what I would do. I'd say, here's the tile. Now let's find it on this based on the application that you're doing. Does it take a few extra minutes to explain to somebody? Absolutely, but it's worth it. So always ask questions. That's how you're going to find out, okay? So this is a powder one. You'd, you'd mix this up. And if you have to use a little bit of it, if you have to do a whole lot of it, you would get a, a mixer that goes on a cordless drill. You dump some in a pail, and then, and then you mix it up. If you want to mix up, uh, you know, Mike, I'm going to do about a um, two-foot square area at a time. I'm just going to mix it up. So I, get one, I have one of these in my archives, in my tool archives. You can tell it's been used. Mashed potatoes, right? It's just a mixer from doing mashed potatoes from yesteryear. But it really works nice. I can I can just mix that stuff up in that pail and, and even swish it around. And anyways, they work good. You can find them here and there. So the different kinds of adhesives. So these are pre-mixed stuff. The other one was the powder form. You're going to have to mix it, put some water in it, mix it up. Um, but this is pre-mixed. And this one's another pre-mix. And again, remember I showed you how to tell you what notches, what size notches on there. Here's, here's another one showing you different size notches. What, so that, again, going back to what trowel do I use? That's why I said that a lot of times, been dependent on the tile, match it up with what it says here because there's so much, there's a lot of information on here to help you out, to help, help you make those decisions. Okay. There's a, this, this larger one, and the one I'm going to be using and start using in probably about just a few minutes. So this one is a mastic. So just spread it on, and I'll show you that. A little bit more about tile. Remember the large tile? So this this one here looks like a piece of porcelain or marble. You can see that shine on that. And then this one is, a, is more of a ceramic tile. Then you know, so it has more of a matte finish. So the bigger and thicker the tile, the larger the notches will be. You wouldn't use this and have little notches like this. All right, you wouldn't you wouldn't do that <laughs> because then all you're doing is you're just creating this thickness underneath of it, and they're too small. It needs it needs some strength underneath there. The weight of that and us walking on it, it needs to be strong underneath of that tile. Okay. There are these sheets of tile, and these things are pretty cool because you can. If you want the small tile, you can cover a lot of space. These come at 12 inches square, typically. Um, and these are these are probably inch and a half, two inches a piece. And you just you just lay these down just like as if it was one piece. Okay. If if you when you if you see in between here, you can see light right through there. They're all just bonded together on the back side. And all you do is you take a utility knife, one of these, and you would just drag it through there. And you would just take that row off, or maybe you want two rows, or maybe you want three rows. That's actually how, if you had one that was a full sheet of this type of tile, so there's a lot, there's some glass in there, and there's some slate in there. You see that? That's how this one was done. This was a full sheet right here. And someone just like, hey, I'm going to take off one row. And use that as a divider. So those those single sheets like that and this are a little more pricey. But if you're only doing them for a highlighter or something to a transition, not bad at all. There are different ones. I'll just show you some real quick. Here's some more. This is you know some gray. It's got glass and some stone in it. This one is just a glass. Another one of those that are the two by two. Here's another one. You know, you've, you've all seen these. You walk by them in the big box stores or in the tile shops. 
Look for what you want and get it. There's so many, so many choices. So have fun with that part of it. Here's some smaller tiles, some square ones. They, they, there's so many choices of this too. You can see the texture in that tile right there. Maybe you want that. Maybe you just want it smooth. Maybe you just, again, back to those little ones. Uh, one of the things about, these are the tile I'm gonna put down the board this evening. These square tiles like this right here. We're gonna do that in a few, start in a few minutes. But let's just say it was at the edge, uh, the, the outer edge, and this one was gonna be exposed. So they have these tiles that have what's called a bull nose. You see the square edge over here, just a hard square edge right there. But on this other edge, you notice how it's rounded down. So that would be the outer edge. And that way it, it's, it's almost like it's, it trims itself out. Okay. So let's get that out of the way. We'll also need to be using some sponges. It's good to have a pail of water. So that way you can keep your the sponge wet when you're cleaning up and stuff. I'll show you that. Yeah, and some rags, right? Okay, this is the time I would typically ask any questions, but we need to keep moving. So what I did, and this is what every student in our workshops will do. This is what we're going to do at KDL. Everyone that comes to the, those workshops is going to have one of a tile like this in front of them, and they're going to have these tools that are needed to be able to lay out, there's going to be a measure stick, there's going to be a china marker, there's going to be a trowel, there's going to be a little sponge that's wet, there's going to be, there's going to be a paper plate there so we can set the adhesive on there, and then with another one we can set, we can put our, the grout on there when it comes time to grout. So this is what you'll be doing here and there, okay? So the first thing, I, what I did is actually laid this out already. You want the other, well, yeah, I'm going to back up and come forward, but a pattern. You want to know what pattern you have. There are so many different kinds of patterns. There's the subway tile. We see it's very popular now, which is a, a white, elongated tile that's probably four inches long and two inches high or six inches long and three inches high, or four inches long, 12. Anyway, there's so many choices. Find out what tile and then what pattern you want to use. And then what I call dry lay some tiles, lay them down on the floor. And, and even if they're going to go on the wall, lay them on the floor and just let, stand back and look at them, right? Look and see if you see, yeah, that's what, that's really what I want to do. And the other thing is, is if you were going to go from, from edge to edge, let's say this was the back wall of a shower. Okay. This is the tub. That's how wide it is. We're going to start with, we're going to start with a tile there. And I'm just going to come across and then you'd have another tile and then you'd have another tile and then we'd have this. So there's extra, right? So we need to figure out what we want to do because we don't want to have full on that side and a half of one on this side. So what I would rather do is slide this one, oh, take some off from that one. And you know, now this line that is in the center, there's a, a vertical line right there. That is the starting point. And then we go that way and come this way. And then we're going to take off like three quarters of an inch or an inch of each one of these. So now we really centered this and we have the same piece here and here. And we also gained um, what I would call a larger uh, flat surface of the tile compared to it being pushed over. So you want to be able to see that stuff, okay? Center it both ways. All right. So know your pattern. There's so many basket weave and yeah, just all kinds of them. And so, and this is what I'm going to suggest doing. And this is why we do what we do. We want to show how, but then also it gives you an opportunity to do something. We can read how to do stuff. We can watch videos, we can watch other people do it. You're watching me do this now. But when you have the tool in your hand and you put that adhesive on there and you set those tiles in place and end up grouting it out, there's a there's such a sense of accomplishment, confidence, and yes, I can do that. So that's you so practice. So if you haven't done a lot of tile, even if you come to our tile shop or tile workshops, practice. Get some not get enough extra tile to practice.
I talk a lot, I say a lot, and there's a lot to share with you, and I wish we, would, we had so much more time. So what I'm going to do now is I've opened up this pail, and I'm just going to get some of this adhesive out of here. And like I said, this is this is a towel you'll use when you come to the KDL workshops and here at Home Repair Services. And I'm going to scoop some of this out of the pail. And just put it on this board. So typically for this, for this kind of tile, those little four inch, for these little four inch square tiles like this, this, this would be sufficient. Okay. This would be sufficient to put the, the adhesive on. So I would, I would use this and then just spread this, just spread this around. If you're going to do a big project at home, you won't use one of these little ones, right? You want the one you need so you can really move some product. I'm just showing you this, but I'm going to use the same one you would in our in our in our classes in our workshop. So I'm going to take this piece right here, and I'm just going to pull this, and I'm just going to spread it around. Just move it around. First, I'm just I'm just trying to get it everywhere right now. Okay. Can you imagine yourself doing this? Absolutely. So then what I'm gonna do is I spread that around. So maybe I because I laid this down when I when if I lay this down too flat, this this trowel piece that I've come across, I'm gonna just kind of like spreading frosting, right? Well, what you need is those grooves. That's why they're there. So now I'm gonna now that I've spread it around, I'm gonna bring that stand that up and come across there. Now look at those grooves. You can see the difference between over and in, in where I just did that and up up here and down here. You can see that it looks like it's just more smeared around. Smear it around, but then stand that trowel right up and make those grooves like that, okay? I put on extra stuff on there. <laughs> but so you, so you end up with something like that. See those grooves? I'll show you one that's, that um, was done earlier. And you can see around the perimeter right right there see the, how those grooves those ribs are standing up like that that's what you want that's what you want to have i've seen tile come loose and the reason why a tile is going to be coming loose is because someone did not get enough adhesive behind it so just spread it out stick them in place they dry and they're there but now they, if they ever can move at all, they're going to crack when you when you walk on them or when they, you know, in the tub, their moisture can now get behind them because it's not solid adhesive behind it because it's too thin. So practice, practice. So I, I spread those around like that. And now, in all reality, I can see my lines in there. I'm going to bring this up close. And I don't know if you can see the pencil line or not in the camera eye, <laughs> but I can see it with my eye right here. So I'm gonna just start in that center, like I said, and I'm gonna put a tile right there and I can stick it in there. Now, depending on how much how much um, adhesive you have on there, maybe you think, you know what, Mike, I wish I would, there was a little bit more under it, under that tile. Then grab your tile again. You can see those lines in the back of it. That, that so that's, Help what helps it bond, right? So you could get some more and put on the back of that that tile itself. It's called buttering, right? Butter a piece of toast. <laughs> so you could put some on the back of there and then put it in place, right? So there's a few of them. I'll just do it that way so you see me do this repeatedly. Uh, 
All right, I just I'm put some more on there. And then I'm just going to go again. Right there. Just for the fun of it, I'm going to do a, one of these gray ones so you can see the difference. And the reason why I'm doing this gray one is because it has one of those uh, that that it's called a bull nose. That edge, you can see it right, right there. You see how that's rounded on that edge. If that was the outside one, that if that was is what I would want to have on the outside. Once I turn this around, you'll be able to see. And then the thing is, so I started right in the middle. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to come around here. I'm going to just cut a couple real quick pieces of half inch or half thicknesses. partial pe small pieces and then actually a triangle shaped piece i'll stick these on here and then one of the things about our workshops is they're two hours long i probably won't be able to keep you on a video or on camera for two hours so this is a one hour one hour version of everything all together and hence that's why i probably talking fast and but i hope that you are wanting to know more and come to kdl for some hands-on practice and to home repair services as well this is what we do so i put I put those halves on there like that and now just just because i'm going to do this this funny shaped one here and just stick it on there Um, it's a house, two story. This is the basement, right? Crawl space <laughs> and the roof. So the other thing is product wise that I didn't mention. So my apologies is there's these, these little plus sign. We probably all have seen those, those little plus sign spacers. Those spacers determine how far apart the tiles go. This is a sixteenth of an inch, and they go three sixteenths of an inch, eighth of an inch. So they get they pretty get pretty good size. So you can take some of these as you're actually doing this, and you would place those just like that, and that's how you know you have an equal pattern, right? So you put all those in there like that. Yeah, a little bit different when it's standing upright. When this is laying down, I don't. I wouldn't be getting this, as you can imagine. And one more over on this side. Yeah, there they go. But you get the idea. It, it helps you to equally space all of those out. Okay. And then uh, you make adjustments as needed. Let's just say you had one tile that was tall up higher than another one. I can see it right here, actually, that this tile right here 
the gray one is a little bit higher than this one. You see how it's above the surface just a little bit? So what I'm going to do is I would have a, something as a straight edge. Step out of the way just a minute here. And if I if I wanted to push that down more, what and if I push down on this side, that might just start doing some teeter totter. So I just take something as a straight edge and push them down like that. Right now I know they're just as straight as what this is, and everybody's. Everybody's in line with the neighbor, nice and flush. Okay, and now that made that, made it lay, so they're all laying down nicely. I don't know if you can see that, but yeah, it looks pretty smooth, right? So instead of push, again, the reason why, if I push down on one side, it might just come up on the other side and you're teeter-tottering all over the place. So straight edge, even if you have to tap them, if you got bigger ones, Put a straight edge piece of wood on there and then just lightly, lightly tap it. You know, don't don't hit it hard if you don't want to crack anything, but just like that. That's the tile part. Now I'm going to take these out of here. And typically, the, you would do your grouting tomorrow, right? You'd want to let these things set. So I'm going to clean it up a little bit. It's starting to set up already. Well, you, you would grout it tomorrow, and what's going to happen is I got to do this very carefully, otherwise, because they're just going to kind of like slide around and move on me. So I'm going to get some grout. And put just a little bit of grout on here. So this is, this is, this is a tan. This is a, a sanded grout. Okay, there's sanded grout and there's unsanded grout. If you keep the tiles real close together, right? So right now they're probably about an eighth of an inch apart. But if we keep the tiles close together, then you would want to use a grout that didn't have sand in it. It would be an unsanded grout because it would go in to fill that void, that small void more easily. Another thing about these tiles is I'm going to bring this up real close. And if you look right, I'll get it right here. See it? And right here, right here, there are little raised up little ribs so that when one tile goes up against another, those two bump. So those two are bumping. Now you can see it. Those two are bumping and they automatic, there's like an automatic spacer. So if you did that, you wouldn't use those little plus signs that I was talking about earlier. You would just bump all these together. But then you would use an unsanded grout in there because the sand would end up just becoming too thick. So my, our little, remember this thing? So this is our sponge trowel. And then I, what I would do is I would just start working that grout and pushing it down in there to begin with. Push all of those in there. Fill those voids just by pushing them in first. And then I'll show you that going from one side to another thing. And you just the idea is try not to get too much and push it so much, you know, like you're gonna get it all in one thing, one one working, because then you end up what you do is you end up just pushing it all over the place and have more to clean up and, and a mess. So, so you can see my, what, what I've done is just fill those gaps. All right. So now that I've done that, though, I'm going to put it over on that side. And then I want to come across this on an angle, like I said. Because if I just come straight across it, it's kind of like going over those little speed bumps, you know, when you're going down the expressway and all those little boop, 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 boop. So it'd be like hitting that groove and then that groove and then that groove. And each time the corner of this is just going to go down in there. But instead, it's better if it comes across on an angle. Come across on an angle, both directions, both directions, and then back the other way too, right? And what that's doing is it's pushing it against the side as it goes across there. It's just pushing it right against there. 
Oh, the tile's moving on me. I can see it already, <laughs> obviously, because I didn't wait until tomorrow. All right, so there's there's that. And one thing is, it's a good idea to have a pail of water, so that as you're as you're working on stuff and you know you're done with it, um, you would you would just drop the tools right into that pail of water. So the first thing I'm going to do is just take another one of these. Okay, I could take the other one and get it wet and um, wipe it off right now, but I'm just going to take another one and just maybe take off some of the extra right now right it's cleaning time so i have a, a collection of sponges here because i can't go back and forth to the water and then you just wipe okay you don't you don't rub you don't push them down in you don't if you if you push really hard and you're forcing the sponge into that groove and it's actually going to take some of that grout out right back out of that crack again so just take a sponge and wipe okay just wipe it. And you don't want the sponge to be so wet that the water is dripping out of it because now it's going to dilute the surface and the surface then is not going to be as durable. I just rotated the sponge. And you're always going to have different now I just grabbed a different sponge you're always going to have some residue on the surface and it's going to dry and it's going to have a haze on the surface of it and then another sponge yeah that one was too wet and then so you would have again you'd be rinsing that sponge out and just keep wiping it so it, you know it takes a little bit of cleaning but do it now because you don't want that to dry on the surface it's a lot of work to get that off there when it's dry and then you would just take a you know a cloth after words and and dry it wipe it down make sure you don't have none on the surface okay that's what you're after because you can always wipe it and then let's say that's what it is i'm going to move it a little closer and you can see now, I hope, my, my spacing wasn't the greatest, but you can see the depth of these grooves in this adhesive right here, right? The ribs standing up like that, and you can see the tile. You can see the tile is all flat, right? Well, we brought it all down the level. We use those spacers, but again, you put the tile down, you space it all out, and you let it dry overnight, and the next day you can put the, the grout in. Because all they're doing is moving around on me. So um, that gives you an overall view of it. And you can insert any of these, any of these other pieces, like in a row across there. You can just get creative. Just what are you thinking? Right. And then the next, when, when this all dries down, there's going to be like, there's like this white haze over everything. And I have, you know, terracotta tile. Well, this is just a thing for buffing it. And once it was all dry, then you would just buff it out with one of these. And yeah, just just wipe, wash it again. Just wash it again, wash it again. Here's one that was done earlier, a weekend ago or so, and you can see, if I let the light hit that just right, you, know, you can see the haze. You see it looks a little dirty, right? Maybe if I lay it down like this, let the light shine on it. And all I'm, all I'm gonna do is buff it up. Actually, I'm going to try to do more on one side than the other. Do two tile. Now, I don't know if you can see a difference in that or not, but these two right here are a lot cleaner than the bottom two. I don't know if that's helping you out any or not, but it does. These are nice and shiny and clean, and these got uh, like a film, a residue on them. So, so hey, that's... um. That's an, uh, almost an, uh, an hour's worth, and this is what you get to do when you come to the workshop. So, again, thanks so much for KDL, and I thank all of you for listening to me.
And this is a lot of conversation, a lot of different stuff, a lot of information, but you can go back and watch it again. But then you can also go to KBL and do this hands on, right? Because you, you, you gain so much more when you actually have the hands on experience of doing something. So hope to see you at KBL's libraries and then also here at Home Repair Services on Saturday weekends, on Saturdays, <laughs> yes, Saturday weekends at 10 o'clock. Free classes, all of them are. So hope to see you and thanks again for joining us. And thanks so much again to KDL for partnering with Home Repair Services to bring all this information to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. I know I learned a lot. <laughs> You're very welcome. Yes. Very that wraps us up for tonight. Um, but don't forget, like Mike mentioned earlier, he will be back for two hands-on tile workshops. The first is Wednesday, January 26th at 6 p.m. at our Plainfield Township Ranch. The second is Monday, February 7th at 6.30 p.m at our Alpine Township Ranch. And be sure to check out kdl.org for more of our upcoming events. Absolutely.